I actually just realized something, and I did a video clip, but I forgot to put it in either part two or part three. So I'm going to have to go back to the computer and see if I can find that video. I talked about pre-fitting your new felt strips in your uh, flipper pieces before you sand and polish these because these will be all nice and shiny and everything and then you're you're trying to get these if you're if you're going to grind them to fit down in the the rolled edge is what i'm saying um you know if you're just going to glue them right at the top of the rolled edge you, you you can be you'll be just fine but like these two pieces i polished and they they turned out really nice so i put blue tape on them just to protect the face side of them but i already pre-fitted the felt strips for the side and uh, just in case I don't find the video, uh, I ground the back side. There is a wide side of this where the stainless bead is, and then there's a thin side here that's just a painted black bead. So I wanted the polished stainless piece to be outside, which is going to be on top. The black painted piece, I ground the back side down thin so it would tuck in behind here. So I can show you here. So I went in there and thinned that down. <laughs> That's hard to do one-handed. Anyway, I've got it. See how it popped in there? So I thinned that down and it actually pops down in there. So I'm still gonna glue them, but that popped down in there. See that? It just snaps right in there. Now, obviously, if you go way too far, it's just gonna you know, it's not going to kind of lock in there, but I ended up just grinding the whole back side of that, that one side with my Rolock disc and, and got it to where it, it'll tuck down in there so it'll be easier to glue it. Now, we'll say this front part up here, you know, you have to bend it. It's not too much fun. It's not terrible. I shouldn't say it's not fun. It's it, it's just, you know, you, you got to mess with it, mess with it, mess with it to get it in there. But um, anyway, it's just how I did it. And again, you know, if you want to go through there and open up that, rolled edge and try to bend it and beat it all back down in there more power to you man i'm telling you i'm not gonna do it i don't want to tweak this out and warp it all out and then have to spend more time doing it so anyway pre-fit your felt uh strips if you're gonna grind that that side you can see my uh, grinder mark here on this where i just flattened it off basically and it makes it thin and it'll fit down in behind that rolled edge from there so you don't have to go back in and try to do all that crap so i think it took me probably about 30 minutes to do both pieces it wasn't too bad uh there was you know trying to fit it up in there and there'd be an area that wouldn't quite snap in and i would you know stick a little tiny piece of tape on the felt and then i'd pop it back out and then i'd grind that little spot and then so it was trial and error getting it fit but that was before i went through and did all the dent repair and the you know the polishing and all that because if you're going in there messing with that that much, you're going to end up scratching it up. But I guess you could do it and put tape on it. But anyway. All right, guys. So what I did on, on this in, in particular, uh, this, this plate, this is actually the good plate from my good flipper on the inside here. The original felt strip and the, the plate. But... This is one of the, the spare flippers I have that is split right here and it's all bent and there's all kinds of dents and it's actually uh, kinked up right here, a big crease in it. So this flipper is just for parts or this piece. So I drilled all the rivets out of it and removed its plate, which is right here. But what I was trying to do was just try to see, find some different ways of uh, removing the felt strip from the plate. So on the first one i used a punch on just the end of the felt strip and drove it out spraying it with pv blaster and stuff and it it worked it just took a lot of time to get it out i, I you know i got it knocked out i don't know three or four inches out of one end or the other and then clamped some vice grips on it and just worked it like a slide hammer and just give it you know hard yanks and got it out of there so this time i wanted to see about doing it without any kind of lubrication. And I gotta tell you, it, it didn't budge. Like it wouldn't even move trying to, to punch that felt strip out of there. So what I'm gonna do is peel this out with pliers and you can already see where I've, I've already peeled it. Um, 
this is quite a pain in the butt, but I did want to show a different way of removing these that's less messy, I guess. And they're both probably about the same amount of time, truth be told. So all I'm doing is I basically took a little pocket flat blade and, and slid it in between the, the felt strip uh, and the rear backing plate and just peeled it up a little bit. And then I used a little bit wider of a flat blade screwdriver to get it bent straight up. So now I'm just taking a, a healthy set of pliers here and I'm just doing this number. And it's sardine can lid rolling it is what it's doing. Um, it, it, you know, either way it sucks. This way, it, it looks to me like might be the best way to do this one because you have less chance of, you know, tweaking something out by hammering and punching and, you know, jerking on it and all that kind of stuff. But that that's pretty much, I just wanted to show a different way of doing it. Um, you know, with this only being the second set I've ever done, it's, it's going to be a learning curve because there's no videos or nothing out there that tells you how to remove these. So this is what I'm going to try. Now, what I did was to reinstall the plate into this old flipper, uh, I just used some 632 Allen button head screws because I had them here with some nuts. And I just put one here and one here on, the, on this end. And it's just basically to hold the plate in there while I do this. Now, I'm going to tell you this. If you took your entire plate out, which you can take the rivets, drill the back of the rivets out, and you can pull this whole plate with the felt strip on there out. If you're going to try to remove this out of just the plate, it, it, you can really tweak this plate out. Uh, because this is just thin sheet metal. When it's inside a flipper, you've got double thicknesses of metal, which is going to make it stronger and less likely to tweak this out. Because I don't want this... You know this flange that's that's rolled over on the plate i don't want to tweak it because i'm going to be grinding an edge basically flattening off the side of one side of the felt strip so it'll slip down in there but i just wanted to show a, a different way of doing it so this might actually be the cleanest way of doing it so i mean it's actually working pretty easy I just I gotta go a long way with it you know what I mean I guess really it's not that bad at all so if I do another set of flippers in the future which I doubt I do this is the way I'm gonna do it because this is just kind of a faster way of doing it but if you're trying to remove this off your flipper uh, which as I stated, this is a different flipper stainless piece itself. It's from another one that's junk, so I don't care about the face of it. But if you're going to be trying to remove this from your flipper that has the piece you're going to use, I would suggest putting some masking tape on there so you don't, you know, moving it around on the table, gouge something up. I thought that was interesting and thought it was worthy of putting in a video here. Just basically coiling it up. Give me some tin snips out there and I'll cut that off. I gotta say this is the easiest way to remove that <clears throat> hmm. awesome so now I'm gonna remove my two little Allen buttons that I put in here now originally like a week or two ago when I was I did an explanation video and I was talking about stuff and I was going to use Allen buttons on this flipper, these little 632 uh, Allen buttons like that with a nut on the back to reassemble everything because it would have been simpler because when I rebuilt my first set I really mangled up the, 
the rivets pretty bad trying to put the new ones in on the first set. So I thought this would be a little bit cleaner of a job. And with the car being a custom, I didn't care that it was an Allen button instead of a rivet. So, I mean, I could still probably go ahead and use these on the outside. And it's actually not a bad idea. The problem is on the pivot side of it, these little 632 nuts are rather large in diameter. So I was gonna have to go in here and uh, grind down just a little bit, just a little bit of one side when I put it in there. So uh, to me, it's just, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rivets because I ordered the, the punch set to go ahead and do this. Uh, easier, I guess you could say. But anyway, so this flipper piece, I don't need. Now this, I do need. Now I blasted this yesterday with the felt strip still on it. And my idea was if I blasted it with a felt strip on it, get a lot of that crusty rust off there and it'd make it come out easier when I punched it, but it didn't, didn't work. But I'm happy with that. And I didn't tweak out the, the flange there. So the, the felt strip will, will go in quite a bit easier. So. Just thought I'd add that in, guys. All right, guys, so I'm getting ready to fit the uh, new felt strip uh, to the plate. Uh, this is the rear plate from the flipper door itself. And I actually blasted this, my little blaster, uh, with the old felt strip on it, thinking that it would get a lot of rust off and it'd come off easier. So after I fit this strip, I'm then going to go out there and, and blast this better and get it you know, clean where the felt strip was. Uh, i still got a little bit more blasting to do around these anyway. And then I'll paint this, just spray paint. But anyway, what I'm going to do is, I had talked about this earlier, when you get your new felt strips, it has a stainless bead on one side, and it's pretty thick. And then the other side is just painted black, and it's thin. So that thin side with the black paint on is what I'm going to make go down in that channel. It will not fit in there, you know, right away. So what I'm going to do is use a, a sanding disc here and I'm going to thin down the back side of this, the black part, uh, until it actually slides down inside there. Now I'm still going to glue this, but I am not going to go through here and try to crimp that back in there, you know, open this rolled edge up and then go back in there and try to crimp it out. Uh, be, the reason is it'll end up being wavy and ripply and it'll just be a mess from you know when these were made they were put into a machine a full machine and it it did it so that's how it's nice and straight um, but anyway this is how I'm gonna do it and I'm still gonna glue it in with weather strip adhesive but I'm gonna make sure it slips down in there because that will ensure that it looks straight in there and also, it doesn't, if the glue ever comes loose, it won't just fall flat straight down out of there. So that weather strip adhesive, if, if you've ever used it, you know, if you've ever had to clean that stuff up after it's dry, it, that's some sticky stuff. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and grind these out. Now, right now, I need a measurement off of that, and I'm just going to kind of do it redneck. I've got a flat blade pocket screwdriver here. And I'm gonna slide this into the end of where that rolled edge is till it stops. And then I am gonna mark that right even with where the end of it is. So that's how deep that went in there because this is tapered, a flat blade screwdriver is tapered. So that's how I know how deep that is. And then at this point, I'll take this and I am gonna caliper out that thickness Right there, so that's my gauge. So when I start grinding this with that disc, I can take these and just start running it down them. And if that fits in there, I know I've got it good enough. If it doesn't go down in there, I gotta grind that spot some more. So right now, that won't even go over that. It is very close. It is not that much bigger. So here we go. Now I usually use two inch discs and I like Norton Blaze. They're my favorite. They're very expensive. They're orange, but I use two inch. To me, a two inch, you have more control over a three inch. And the other, the biggest problem with a three inch is it likes to fly off of here. So that's why I do not like three inch, but 
I'm out of Norton Blaze, and this is all Lowe's had in stock. Uh, was these three inch, so I'm kind of stuck with them. So hopefully the disc doesn't fly off and get into the car. Now I'm doing it on an angle a little bit because I'm not trying to get into this back of the stainless strip. It's not going to hurt it if you do gadget up because you're not going to see it anyway. That This backside goes down. But uh, anyway, this roughing this up will will definitely do the trick. Now when you're done grinding this and you've, you've got it to fit, uh, take a paint marker or you know paint pen or something and go back over this just to ensure that it doesn't rust because this is a rolled channel and if rain or water ever gets down in there it will set and if you got something bare metal it's going to rust a lot faster so keep that in mind definitely need to go back and, and re-coat it i'm actually going to try just this area here So it is very, very close. Now one thing to note is this is actually a rolled piece of steel. It's rolled. So uh, it's rolled over. So if you go really, really far, that will end up you'll see that line start coming through and this piece at that point will just fall off there and I don't really want that to do that it won't really hurt anything because you're gluing them in anyway but I'm trying to grind that just about perfect where it'll lay in that channel so I've got it this end here to where it goes down in there so you can I've got it all the way up to the felt strip already and I had to kind of pop it to get it out of there so that fits in there really really nice so just got to do that the whole way it, it's not that terrible of a job i mean it does it kind of quick i've already got you know like a four inch section there done i just got to finish the rest of it but you know if these uh, these things were super simple you know everybody would be able to to do them and knock them out quicker but just not going to happen so i'm going to finish fitting this uh, and then when it when it fits in here really really good and i'm happy with it i'm going to take this back out and blast it and get it clean and then I'm gonna paint all the other parts which I actually blasted yesterday these pieces here I didn't really get the nails much because I was having trouble holding them all holding them in my fingers with my big gloves on so I'm gonna use my wire wheel over there but I'm gonna paint all these parts and I still really haven't decided the colors yet so I have this color here that I bought at O'Reilly's it's dupla color and it's called stainless steel and to me if you were going to do a silver on this because originally this plate was cad plated or zinc plated silver i mean if you're trying to do a really high-end professional you know date coded numbers matching restoration i you know definitely take these and have them replated somewhere or send them off and have them recad or zinc plated i'm not sure which one it is but for me my car is custom and i don't really care to send this off and spend money because i don't need to so I'm just going to spray paint them. Now I did have a thought of just doing black. And the reason is the felt strip's black. So to me, putting silver paint and having it behind something that's polished stainless, I don't know that I like that. So I'm thinking about doing black. Now here's what I'm going to use. I've talked about this in a lot of my videos in the past. And Duplicolor is not a sponsor. So... If I'm going to use a spray paint on a restoration, I like the engine enamels. And the reason is, this is quality stuff. Because it's made for an engine. It's high heat. It's chemical resistant. Uh, so, to me, it's better than just an off-the-shelf hardware store spray paint. So, this is what I will use if I decide to do black. A lot of the stuff on my car is done out of a spray gun. So... Uh, with urethane paints but you know like this I don't really want to mess with mixing up paint and waiting for it to dry and all you know catalyze paint and wait for it to dry and all that or other do spray paint and just move on these are not going to be in the sun they're all up underneath so it's not going to get a lot of UV exposure uh, 
But anyway, now I do have some aerosol uh, etching primer. So I'm going to etch prime these first and, you know, make sure it sticks well and then uh, spray paint them. But another thing I need to do to these, which I'm going to wait until I blast it, is you can kind of see where the rivets where the rivets were, you can see that little indent in this, and it's, it's on all of them, it's done the same way. So I'm gonna take it over there on my uh, vise on the flat pad, and I'm gonna lay it down, and I'm gonna use a punch, a flat end punch, and I'm gonna hammer that area and pretty much try to dolly it back straight. You could probably get it with some uh, flat jaw pliers. Let me try that, actually. It may be just as fast. Now I've got some pliers here that are uh, jeweler's pliers. I mean, these are craftsmen. You can uh, get these just about anywhere. Lowe's or whatever has, you know, sets kind of like this. These are completely flat and smooth inside, so they don't have no lines or grooves in them to chew something up. So uh, let's just try to see if we can just kind of work this. See if it'll flatten it out without having to, you know, take it over and hold a punch and a hammer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, got it a little bit, but it didn't get it really perfect. Now, as soon as I rivet this back in, it's probably gonna, you know, bend it again, but that's fine. The plate for the other side, I'd already, I've already done this and worked it over. So, uh, I did do a punch and hammer on it, but I didn't try the plier trick, and this seems to be, seems to be working pretty decent. Also got a little bit of a high spot back here. The, the metal's kind of pulled out a little bit from the rivet. So I'm going to go in here and file these down flat a little bit. So anyway, it's just lots of little tedious work and it's almost like I'm back working on jewelry again. It's just tedious work. You really got to pay attention to what you're doing, you know what I mean? But anyway guys, I'm going to finish grinding this out and uh, get it to where it fits down in that channel. and. Should be good to go, and then I'll blast that. And then at that point, after this piece is blasted, all the other pieces are uh, blasted, so I'll be able to paint. So I just still need to figure out a color. But I may do these plates black, and I may do these, that stainless steel. I may do these in stainless steel. Uh, the springs, I don't know yet. I'm kind of kind of thinking. When I paint something, I like to have different colors, so when it's finished and put together, it looks like a brand new part instead of just having all the pieces the same color. Um, now if I do this black, I might do these in a flat black and do this in gloss black. And I may do this in flat black and do these in gloss black, it just depends. That's probably what I'll do actually because this is not high gloss, this color of this. I, may, I might do this uh, semi-flat or semi-gloss or whatever I got over there in duplicolor. Um, and then do the springs high gloss. That's, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let me just walk over here and see what I got. Here's a color right here. This is common to ha that they have on the shelf, and, and this is a really nice semi-gloss color. It's called Ford semi-gloss, but I don't mind because it's just a paint, it's just a spray paint, uh, even though it says Ford. I, I like all three brands, it doesn't bother, bother me at all, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna get to it. All right, guys. So I used the roll-lock disc and I ground that uh, down. And then at that point, I took my caliper that I set on the end of the screwdriver, so I know how thick it needs to be. And I just ran that down it uh, until it goes all the way, so I know it's gonna fit in that channel. Now. Here's something that you might think in your head that that's not going to work. Uh, you know, when you're grinding this one side, when you put it in there, you may think that that felt's going to stick up a little bit, and you're correct. You know, when you grind just one side, it's no longer going to, when it goes in there, it's going to be sticking up on the, the stainless bead side, it's going to be sticking up a little bit. And the truth is, it doesn't matter. Once you clamp it down for the glue to, to dry, uh, it's going to be where it needs to be because if you look at the end of that It's got to lay on top of this piece here this bracket and the top of the the rivet deals there So that is going to make it stick up anyway But this you know is deeper down in here because it has a channel right there so that felt strip 
the top edge of it to there, it, it's going to make it set in there at an angle. So that is the way it is. It's, it doesn't matter is what I'm saying. That's really the only way the average person at home restoring these flippers can get these felt strips to set in there. Now, you don't need to go through the hassle and grind all this. You can just glue it right at the top of the bead if you wanted to. Um, it will work just fine. But it doesn't take that long to go through there and grind that down a little bit and, and get it to where it stuffs up in there. So, uh, to me, it's just easier. But not necessarily easier. It's just uh, you, you get a better result, I think. And it pretty much it hides this black where this one is all chewed up, you know, now the black paint's chewed up on it for me pre-fitting it, trying to stuff it down in there. So once I get it up in there, it'll be covered. And all you're gonna see is a stainless bead on top of that. So, but I'm not, I'm not gonna remove these brackets and then have to go back and, and re-rivet them on and all that. I'm just gonna leave them and paint them on, in place, you know what I mean? Um, the main hardware is what I wanted to make sure was clean on these, which is the springs and you know the brackets and the hinge and all that stuff. That's the stuff I wanted really clean, just in case a judge at the show, you know, bends down and he shines a light up in there and looks inside there. So, <clears throat> to me, some colors, different colors used would be uh, more detailed. But I've got it to where it fits in there pretty good. So uh, at this point, I'm going to go in here and uh, touch up this where I ground it. I'm just going to use, I've got a black paint pen that has the little ball bearing inside of it that you shake. Um, I'm going to use that and, and do that. You could spray paint it if you wanted to, put a little tape on the side of the felt, and then go back in there and re-spray paint it if you wanted to. But I'm going to use a paint pen because it'll be quite a bit faster and uh, not have to use any tape. But anyway, it's pre-fit. And you can go ahead and put this on and you can glue this to this and let it sit overnight and then you can rivet this into uh, the, the flipper piece. So that's what I'm going to do. More work! Yay! Alright guys, so I found a difference here and it kind of sucks. I had stated in one of my videos earlier on this flipper restoration that I was going to use these brackets out of this 55 flipper that's pretty bent up and beat up in my 56 or 7 flippers that I'm going to use. And the reason is, uh, here's mine, they're real, you know, crusty. Now I, I can blast them, but they're going to have pits in them, so now I'm going to have to primer them and then let it dry and then block them out. Because I really didn't want pitted parts in there but I may end up with them anyway. Uh, so anyway, I was going to drill the rivets out on that one and this one, and I was still going to clean them up and paint them. They just wouldn't have had pits in them. You know, they'd look like brand new parts. Problem is, they're not made the same. So I'm glad I looked at this before I went through here and, and drilled them out. So this is the bracket from my flippers. And if you look at it from a side view, it just basically looks like an L. If you see the way it's bent there, it's just a like a slight curve to it. And if you look at those up in there, that is a C shape. Like that's shaped like a C right there. So that is not going to work. I'm not going to try it. Let me just uh, say that. I'm not going to, I don't want to take a chance and do all the work to these and then put them in and then some, for some stupid reason with my bad luck that I have, that not end up working out and have to turn around and fix these and put them in and cost more time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the ones that came out of it. But gotta do a little work to them first. So I can... All right, so I got the uh, springs painted gloss black, super shiny black. Uh, the brackets, I did those in Duplicolor aerosol. It's stainless steel is the color, so. Those are sitting there to dry. And then I just got done shooting these and they're still kind of wet. This is just flat black. Uh, this is the rear backing plates for the flippers and I just did them in flat black. And the reason I did is the felt strips themselves are black, but they have a stainless bead on them that's polished. 
and that you know goes up on the high side of that and I thought it would be a nice look having polished stainless steel on black um, kind of like that polished stainless steel on black so being as it's not original that's just what I decided to do but the other thing about doing these in black when I use that 3M weather strip adhesive that's black uh, it'll help camouflage it even more so if I had done these in silver and then glued on those strips if any glue was visible around the edge or whatever you would see it because it's black on silver just what I thought I would do but I think by the time I get them together it's gonna look pretty good and I'm pretty excited uh, now because I'm just about over the finish line on uh, getting all of the work done on them you know other than the reassembly and then I got a package today from Amazon and had no idea uh, it had my address on it but it had a different person's name on it and all I said was Jeremy so I told the guy I said I didn't order anything and this is not my name I said this is my address and he just looked at me like I was silly so then I brought him in here and opened it up and I'm pretty sure I know who it is now so it's a friend of mine I haven't seen in probably 20 years maybe <laughs> anyway thanks Jeremy uh, got me some magnifiers I actually mentioned this in a video the other day that I wish I had my set from when I did jewelry repair they even have an LED light on them and this is what I thought was awesome because the pair that I used to use in jewelry repair did not have this nor did it have an LED light it has different magnification lenses on it so how freaking cool is that I will use the crap out of that so again thanks Jeremy for that that was pretty awesome man I will definitely use that it's rechargeable too uh, for the LED light so and it has a little magnifying lens that comes out in the front too but man talk about a tool that everybody needs that'd be it right there thanks man thanks for watching